Hello Immortal News family and welcome back to our channel. In the last 24 hours we have received the somber news of the passing of extraordinary talents and today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Before we start we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Number 9. Bernard Marcus, renowned businessman and philanthropist, was born on May 12, 1929, in Newark, New Jersey. From modest beginnings, he rose to become one of the most influential figures in American business. As a co-founder of the Home Depot, Marcus revolutionized the home improvement industry, introducing the warehouse model that brought affordable, quality products to countless Americans. Under his leadership, Home Depot grew into a retail giant and Marcus served as its first CEO and chairman until his retirement in 2002. Marcus's impact extended far beyond business. A passionate philanthropist, he was a founding signatory of the Giving Pledge, dedicating the majority of his wealth to causes close to his heart. Through the Marcus Foundation, he championed initiatives for children, medical research, veterans, and Jewish causes. Notably, his contributions led to the establishment of the Georgia Aquarium in Atlanta, one of the world's largest aquariums and a beloved landmark. He also co-founded the Israel Democracy Institute and was instrumental in establishing the Marcus National Blood Services Center in Israel. Committed to supporting veterans, Marcus funded programs to aid those with traumatic brain injuries and was an active supporter of Autism Speaks, advocating for autism research and resources for families affected by autism. His generosity earned him several prestigious honors, including the Salvation Army's Others Award, and the William E. Simon Prize for Philanthropic Leadership. Marcus's life was deeply rooted in values of service and enterprise. A proud family man, he is survived by his wife, Billy, their stepson, and his two children from a previous marriage. Marcus passed away on November 4th at the age of 95, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire future generations. Tributes to Bernard Marcus. Number 8. Tyka Nelson, born on May 18, 1960, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, was a gifted American singer and songwriter known for her soulful music and unique journey as part of a deeply musical family. As the daughter of jazz musician John L. Nelson and jazz singer Maddie Della Shaw, and the younger sister of the legendary Prince Tyka, was surrounded by music from an early age. This musical legacy inspired her to forge her own path as an artist, developing a style that was entirely her own. Over her career, Taika released four albums, showcasing her ability to blend genres and convey deep emotion. Her single, Mark Anthony's Tune, became her most well-known work, reaching number one. 33 on Billboard's Hot R&B Hip Hop Songs Chart in 1988. Produced by renowned musician Larry Graham, the song was inspired by her admiration for the singer Mark Anthony, capturing a playful yet heartfelt tone that resonated with listeners. Taika's music was distinctive, reflecting her personal experiences, her creativity, and her own voice, a voice that managed to stand out even alongside her famous family. Her songs often explored themes of love, faith, and resilience, revealing a vulnerable side that endeared her to fans. Beyond her musical career, Taika was a devoted family member and a compassionate, generous soul. In 2016, following the passing of her brother Prince, she took on the honor of accepting his American Music Award for Top Soundtrack, a role she fulfilled with remarkable grace, speaking with heartfelt words that resonated with the global audience still mourning his loss. This moment exemplified her love and respect for her family and her willingness to honor Prince's memory and his immense contributions to music. Taika also supported her family in private ways, often caring for her six children and embracing her role as a loving mother. Her life reflected the balance of personal devotion and public commitment to her music. Taika's legacy extends beyond her own albums and songs. As a member of one of the most influential musical families of her generation, 
she left an imprint on the music community, connecting with audiences in a way that was both honest and reflective of her unique perspective. Known for her resilience, Taika faced personal and professional challenges, but always returned to her love of music, using it as an outlet for expression and healing. In her passing, Taika leaves behind a legacy of heartfelt songs, devoted family moments, and an artistic path marked by authenticity. She will be remembered for her contributions to music and for her gentle spirit, one that will continue to inspire others. Tributes to Taika Nelson Number 7. Herbie Moreau, a renowned cultural journalist and host affectionately known as the Star Hunter, passed away at the age of 56. Born in Haiti, Moreau arrived in Quebec at the age of five and became an influential figure in Canadian entertainment journalism. Known for his charismatic presence and fearless approach, he interviewed some of the world's most famous stars at prestigious events like the Oscars and the Cannes Film Festival, making him a familiar face on red carpets across the globe. Moreau's career was characterized by his tenacity and instinct for capturing unique moments. Colleague Isabel Rassico recalled his knack for getting exclusive footage, such as a spontaneous shot of Tom Cruise arriving on a motorcycle at a Vanity Fair event. With his charm and persistence, Moreau found ways to be in the right place at the right time, securing interviews with celebrities like Angelina Jolie and Halle Berry. Moreau's friend and collaborator Julie Snyder described him as a trailblazer, who didn't take no for an answer, often pushing past boundaries to get the story he wanted. Even in live broadcasts, he preferred authenticity over rehearsals, adding an unparalleled vibrancy to his reporting. Moreau was deeply committed to showcasing both international stars and Quebec's own talent. His work on programs like Star System, District 5, and Flash highlighted the accomplishments of Quebecois creators alongside global icons, bridging the worlds of Hollywood and Quebec. Moreau's passion extended to his personal life, where he was a dedicated friend and proud father, always cheering on those he loved. His passing, announced on the same day as Quebec's Adescu Awards Gala, felt especially poignant, given his long-standing association with such events. Tributes poured in, celebrating him as a class act, with a contagious laugh and a genuine passion for his work. His legacy endures in the countless moments he captured and shared with his audiences. Honor him as an unforgettable force in entertainment journalism, a cherished friend, and a true cultural ambassador. Tributes to Herbie Moreau. Number 6. Johnny Madsen, a revered Danish musician, songwriter, and painter, passed away. Living on the picturesque island of Fanu, Madsen was not only a celebrated artist but also a cultural icon, deeply woven into the fabric of Danish arts. Best known for his role in the supergroup trio Dalton from 1983 to 1992, alongside Lars Lilholt and Alan Olsen, Madsen's musical style was unique, blending classic rock with a distinctly Nordic touch. His lyrics, often reflective and poignant, spoke to a generation and continued to resonate with audiences well beyond his tenure with Dalton. Beyond music, Madsen was a passionate painter, his works inspired by Expressionism. He often cited Vincent van Gogh and Jens Sundergaard as major influences, which was evident in the vibrant colors and emotional depth of his art. His gallery, Madsen's Malarier on Fanu, became a cultural landmark showcasing his love for both the natural beauty of his home and the arts. Madsen's contributions to Danish culture extended into literature as well. His book, By All Means in English, published in 2007, offers insights into his artistic process and includes images of his works, providing a window into the soul of an artist who devoted his life to the pursuit of creative expression. 
Johnny Madsen leaves behind a legacy that transcends his music and paintings. As a beloved figure in Denmark, his artistic vision and unique voice have left an indelible mark on the arts, enriching Danish culture and inspiring artists and musicians to follow their own creative paths with passion and perseverance. Tributes to Johnny Madsen, Johnny. Number five, Jonathan Brostoff, a devoted public servant, community advocate, and champion for mental health, leaves behind an inspiring legacy of compassion, service, and advocacy. Born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Jonathan grew up with a profound commitment to social justice, inspired by his parents, a retired lawyer and a social worker, who instilled in him values of fairness and empathy. Jonathan's career began in 2014 when he was elected to the Wisconsin State Assembly, where he worked passionately on issues ranging from mental health to disability rights. His commitment to mental health advocacy was deeply personal. Jonathan openly discussed his own experiences with bipolar disorder and depression, becoming a voice of hope and resilience for countless others. As a member of the Assembly Committee on Mental Health, he tirelessly promoted mental health resources and support systems for those in crisis seeking to destigmatize these challenges. In 2022, Jonathan was elected as the alderman for Milwaukee's District 3, bringing his enthusiasm and dedication to City Hall. Known for his unyielding spirit, he even committed to growing his hair until the state changed licensing standards for sign language interpreters, advocating fiercely for the deaf and hard of hearing community. His unique approaches and relentless dedication made a tangible impact across Milwaukee and Wisconsin. Those who knew Jonathan remember him as a loving father and husband, a loyal friend, and a leader who greeted everyone with empathy. His home was always open to others, and he touched the lives of many with his kindness and generosity. Jonathan's work as an advocate, whether for marginalized communities or pressing social issues, has left a lasting legacy in Milwaukee. Tributes to Jonathan Brostoff. Number 4. Murray Sinclair, a pioneering Anishinaabe judge, senator, and tireless advocate for indigenous rights, left an indelible mark on Canada's legal and social landscape. Born on January 24, 1951 in Selkirk, Manitoba, Sinclair, whose spirit name was Majana Gijik, the one who speaks of pictures in the sky, dedicated his life to reconciliation and justice. Sinclair's early life was marked by resilience and dedication to family pausing his studies in physical education to care for his grandmother. His eventual enrollment in law school led him to graduate at the top of his class, and by 1980 he was called to the bar. In 1988, he became Manitoba's first indigenous judge, setting a powerful precedent and breaking new ground for representation in the judiciary. Sinclair's pivotal role as co-commissioner of Manitoba's Aboriginal Justice Inquiry laid the groundwork for the Gladue Principles transforming Canada's justice system by mandating courts to consider Indigenous backgrounds in sentencing. Yet his work on the Truth and Reconciliation Commission solidified his legacy. As chair, Sinclair led the six-year investigation into Canada's residential schools, documenting harrowing survivor testimonies and revealing the painful truth of a cultural genocide. His leadership ignited a national conversation on justice and healing, forever changing Canada's path toward reconciliation. Appointed to the Senate in 2016 and awarded the Order of Canada in 2022, Sinclair used every platform to champion Indigenous rights, urging Canadians to confront the legacies of colonial injustice and work tirelessly toward equity. Murray Sinclair's unwavering dedication to truth, justice and healing resonates deeply. His life serves as a testament to courage, 
compassion, and an unbreakable commitment to truth. Tributes to Murray Sinclair honor a visionary whose legacy will continue to shape Canada for generations. His work reminds us that reconciliation is a journey, and the path he paved will guide future leaders. Tributes to Murray Sinclair. Number 3. Andrei Huserka, one of Slovakia's most accomplished mountaineers, was born in Slovakia in 1989 and quickly made his mark on the world of extreme climbing. Known for his unyielding dedication to exploration and the pursuit of new challenges, Andrei earned respect worldwide for his climbs in regions such as the Alps, Patagonia, the Pamir Mountains, and the Himalayas. He combined athletic prowess with a deep humility qualities that made him an admired member of the Slovak national mountaineering team and a treasured friend among his peers. Andre's career was defined by remarkable achievements, most notably his historic ascent of Langtang Lirung's East Face in Nepal, a feat that had never been accomplished before. His partnership with Czech climber Marek Holacek allowed them to forge a new path up the 7,234-meter peak, displaying incredible skill and courage. Tragically, Andre's life was cut short on the descent when he fell into a crevasse, and despite Holacek's valiant rescue efforts, he could not be saved. Beyond his climbing achievements, Andrej was remembered for his warm spirit and humility. His presence in the climbing community was a constant source of encouragement, and he left an indelible impact on everyone who knew him. His friends and family recall him as a kind, grounded individual who treated everyone he met with kindness and respect, embodying the values of both a mountaineer and a friend. The void left by Andre's passing will be deeply felt within the global mountaineering community and beyond. His legacy of courage and dedication continues to inspire climbers to pursue their dreams while honoring the mountains and the people they encounter along the way. Celebrate his life as a testament to bravery, friendship, and a boundless spirit of exploration. Tributes to Andre Husserka. Number 2. Daniel Seppi, the celebrated Swiss comic artist and storyteller, has passed away at the age of 73. Known for his innovative series Stéphane Clément, Chronicles of a Traveler and C.H. Confidentiel, Seppi left an indelible mark on the world of Franco-Belgian comics, redefining the genre by blending fiction, reportage and travelogue with a realistic style that captured the essence of his journeys and experiences. Born on April 3, 1951, in Carouge, Geneva, Seppi demonstrated an early talent and passion for art and travel. By 16, he had already exhibited a stained glass work, The Virgin and Child, in Geneva, marking the beginning of a lifetime devotion to art. He studied at the School of Fine Arts and the School of Decorative Arts in Geneva, while working as a technical illustrator, always keeping his artistic dreams alive. At 23, Seppi embarked on a life-changing journey to India traveling overland through Central and Eastern Europe, Turkey, Iran, and Afghanistan. His travels inspired his first graphic novel, Le Guépier, which introduced his recurring character Stéphane Clément, an alter ego through whom he expressed his love for adventure and his nuanced, often critical view of the world. Stéphane Clément evolved over 14 volumes, portraying an ordinary man navigating extraordinary global events. Seppi's realistic ink-based style punctuated by bold black fills and texturing, set a new standard in European comics. His work joined the influential Metal Herlant magazine and later, the prestigious magazine, which helped bring his stories to a wider audience. Through the 1980s and 1990s, Seppi released several other series, such as The Shadow of Jaipur, Diplomatic Corps, co-written with his wife Poole, and La Nuit des Clandestins, 
In 2006, he launched CH Confidential, a hard-hitting trilogy that followed a Swiss investigative brigade tackling white-collar crime. His final graphic novel, Lady of Shalott, published in 2017, combined characters from both C.H. Confidential and Stéphane Clément, blending art world intrigue with Seppi's signature suspense and social commentary. Seppi's work earned him numerous accolades, including the Angoulême Festival's Best Screenwriter Award in 1979 for To the East of Karakulak. His stories reflect the gradual shift of comics from genre-focused narratives to more personal and socially relevant tales, anchored in reality yet enriched by fiction's imaginative tools. Tributes to Daniel Tsepi. What's trending on the internet? News 1. Conor McGregor's return to the octagon remains uncertain, despite mounting anticipation among fans. The former UFC champion has been out of action since a leg injury during his 2021 trilogy fight with Dustin Poirier. Although recovery was challenging, hopes for McGregor's comeback soared with an announced welterweight match against Michael Chandler in 2023, following their season of The Ultimate Fighter. However, repeated delays have left the match in limbo. This year brought additional setbacks, including McGregor's withdrawal due to a toe injury just weeks before the fight's scheduled date. The UFC has since postponed the bout, with no confirmation for 2024. UFC President Dana White remains optimistic, stating, I'm 100% confident McGregor will fight next year. As the MMA community waits, Chandler is set to face Charles Oliveira in November, leaving McGregor's next opponent undecided. McGregor has expressed eagerness to resolve his unfinished business with Chandler, but until an official date is set, fans will need to stay tuned for further developments in his fighting future. News 2 Jimmy Holly, a respected Alabama politician who served over four decades in public office, has passed away at the age of 89. Holly died peacefully on November 4th, at a care facility in Elba, Alabama, surrounded by family and friends. Holly was known for his long and dedicated career in Alabama's state government, where he represented the 31st District in the Alabama Senate from 1998 to 2022. His public service journey began in 1974 when he was elected to the Alabama House of Representatives, where he served until 1994. Initially a Democrat, Holly switched to the Republican Party in 2008 aligning himself with the growing conservative movement in the state. In 2019, Holly made headlines for his controversial vote supporting a bill to criminalize abortion at any stage of pregnancy, even in cases involving rape or incest. This vote underscored his commitment to the values he believed in, regardless of public opinion. Holly leaves behind a legacy of public service and dedication to his state. His passing marks the end of an era for Alabama politics as colleagues and citizens remember his contributions to the community and unwavering commitment to his beliefs. News 3. Alexander Pines, a trailblazing chemist known for his groundbreaking advancements in nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, has passed away at 79. Pines, who held emeritus positions at UC Berkeley and was a leading figure at the California Institute for Quantitative Biosciences, died on November 2nd. Pines's innovative work in NMR, particularly in solid-state applications, revolutionized how scientists study molecular structures. His development of cross-polarization, NMR of carbon-13 in solids, along with other pioneering techniques, established modern solid-state NMR. Pine's research extended beyond theoretical science. His work enhanced NMR and MRI applications in fields from materials science to biomedicine, influencing technologies that impact both research and healthcare. Born in southern Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, in 1945, Pines pursued undergraduate studies in Israel before earning his PhD in chemical physics from MIT. In 1972, he joined UC Berkeley, where he became known not only for his technical innovations, 
but for inspiring new generations of chemists. Colleagues remember Pines as a visionary whose contributions have left an indelible mark on modern chemistry, enhancing scientific exploration in ways that will endure for generations. News 4. Queen Camilla has temporarily stepped back from her official duties due to a chest infection, Buckingham Palace announced. Following medical advice, Camilla will take a short period of rest, leading her to withdraw from her scheduled engagements this week. A palace spokesperson shared, With great regret, Her Majesty has had to withdraw from her engagements. She hopes to recover in time to attend this weekend's remembrance events as planned. Queen Camilla expressed her apologies to those affected by her absence, acknowledging any inconvenience or disappointment caused. While Camilla rests under her doctor's supervision, Birgit, the Duchess of Gloucester, will represent her at the annual Field of Remembrance opening at Westminster Abbey on Thursday. Additionally, the Queen will not attend a reception at Buckingham Palace for Olympic and Paralympic athletes, hosted by King Charles on the same evening. Camilla recently returned from a tour of Australia and Samoa. The palace has not provided further information about her illness, respecting her privacy as she focuses on recovery. News 5. Kirsty Dinkelman, wife of renowned wildlife conservationist Graham Dingo Dinkelman, paid a heartfelt tribute to her late husband, who passed away, a month after a venomous snake bite. In her touching message, Kirsty highlighted Graham's incredible love for his family and shared, we know he fought to be here with us, and we are grateful for his strength and resilience. Graham, often called South Africa's Steve Irwin, was celebrated for his deep passion for wildlife and reptiles, amassing over 110,000 followers on YouTube. Together with his family, he dedicated his life to conservation at Dingo's Farm and Reptile Park, inspiring countless fans worldwide. In her tribute, Kirsty expressed the joy and warmth Graham brought to everyone who knew him. His presence brought love, passion, and laughter to our lives, she wrote. She also pledged to carry on his conservation work, preserving his legacy and fostering a love for the natural world. Kirsty extended her gratitude to supporters for their overwhelming kindness, acknowledging the global comfort they've received in this challenging time. News 6. R&B singer Shanice, 51, recently shared her breast cancer journey to encourage women to prioritize their health. In a candid interview on Good Morning America, Shanice revealed her diagnosis after skipping mammograms for eight years due to a past health scare. In March, Shanice finally went for a screening, which led to the discovery of a small tumor. In May, she underwent a double mastectomy. Reflecting on her experience, Shanice shared, Fear kept me from going for eight years. If I'd gone sooner, I could have caught it at an even earlier stage. Since her surgery, the Grammy-nominated artist has found comfort in her faith and shared her message of resilience on social media, feeling healed and restored. Shanice hopes her story will remind women of the importance of early detection. Put that fear aside, she advised, adding, early checks can save lives. This isn't a death sentence. Shanice's courage and openness have inspired many, as she continues to advocate for health awareness and early screening. Number 1. Renato Serio the esteemed Italian composer, conductor, and arranger, was born on November 11, 1945 in Lucca, Italy. With a profound passion for music from an early age, he studied piano, conducting, composition, and electronic music, embarking on a career that would span six decades and leave an indelible mark on the world of music. In the 1960s, Sirio began his journey by collaborating with prominent artists like Shirley Bassey and Nini Rosso. His talent and versatility soon led him to work with an impressive array of international stars, including B.B. King, Dionne Warwick, Tom Jones, Andrea Bocelli, and Laura Pausini. Known for his ability to blend genres seamlessly, he became a favorite among musicians across the globe, establishing a reputation as a gifted and innovative arranger. Serio's career was not limited to popular music. He also made significant contributions to the world of theater and film. He composed for the famed Italian theater duo Garinè and Giovannini, as well as for films like Innocence and Desire and The Pumamon. In the political realm, he made his mark with the composition of Forza Italia's anthem, blending his music with cultural movements in Italy. A pivotal moment in Serio's life occurred in 1967, when he survived a tragic car accident that left his friend, Polish singer Anna German, critically injured. 
Despite suffering fractures, Sirio remained resilient, returning to music with renewed dedication. Sirio's influence on Italian music and beyond endures through his compositions and collaborations. He will be remembered as a visionary who brought elegance and depth to every note he arranged, conducted, or composed. His legacy lives on in the countless lives he touched with his art and the artists he inspired. Tributes to Renato Serio. Jonathan Hayes, a beloved actor and producer known for his role as Seymour in The Little Shop of Horrors, 